Yeah, a little bit more. Dan, just keep doing that for another two rounds, okay? At least. Okay. Once we've done this, we'll be all right. We'll be on again. <coughs> This is James Helder. I'm in Rosal ABC today. With me, I've got Ian Burbage. What's happening, Ian? All right? Yeah, all good, James. Thanks, mate. How are you? Looking well. I'm trying to my best to keep up with you, mate. You know. You're working for Boxfield at the minute, Ian, or they, what? They sorted out Lenny's kit for the last fight, so I think we better plug them, won't we? Yeah, yeah. So. I'll make you right. Ken and Dougie and that, they're, they're good people, aren't they? Good, good guys. Yeah. They've been good for us and other boys we've been involved with, so no, we can't knock Boxfield, mate. Not at all. Yeah. I'm here today to a little bit catch up about what happened with Lenny Dawes in Italy uh, against Michele De Rocco. We've all seen the fight, or a lot of people have seen the fight yeah. for, via the internet and stuff. Could you talk to me a little bit about that night? Um, yeah, I mean, th there was all sort of little things building up. That, you know, we knew once we get off the plane that there was going to be sort of all little episodes that come along, and, and we were sort of quite prepared for that. I spoke to a lot of people, you know, about who'd been out of Italy previously, and they sort of give us a brief background. Um, Mickey Elliott knows all the tricks he come out with us, so we was we was well prepared for anything they could do. What sort of incidents are we talking about? What what were we referring to? It's, it's little stuff they do quite well. In, in all fairness, you know, you, you know from the minute you get to the airport, there's two cars that between them, if you put them together, they wouldn't have had an MOT. So they come to pick you up. Um, the hotel we was due to be booked in that we've been to, that I had emails confirming that we'd been booked in. All of a sudden, we're not booked into that. Um, so then we was taken somewhere else. Then from there, we was told that there's three rooms booked around the corner the, in the original hotel, but all of a sudden they weren't there and it was full up. We walked around there later because we wanted to check Lenny in somewhere separate to where we were staying, and there's plenty of room. We could have booked the whole hotel out. So it's things like that. Um, little stuff, that, you know, there's bits and pieces they, they, they can possibly do with the food. And, and, you know, so we was already with little steps like that. You know, even on the ring... When me and Mick Williamson checked it on the night just before, you know, the, before the fight started, we wanted to make sure the steps were in the right place. The steps were in the right place for the Italian corner, but they weren't in the right place for our corner. So if we hadn't moved them, Mick would have been forced to work left-handed, which obviously is a very unfair advantage that they've got because he's, he's not left-handed, he's right-handed. So we moved the steps around. And it, it was, you know, they didn't play Lenny's music on the way out. And it's all little stuff like that that, you know, we're quite prepared for. And... All right, we're talking about it now. His music never come on when he walked out no, to fight. I mean, and I personally gave it to the guy. But, you know, that is not... I'm not moaning about that. That's not a problem because it, it's, it's one of those things that happens. You know, I've had it happen with, with Danny Donchev up north. So, you know, these things go on. That wasn't going to phase us in any way, shape or form because we was quite prepared for loads of things to be done like that. Um... The, the one thing for me, and, and what I probably am moaning about, is, is the fact of what they used on his cut during the fight. So, you know, that's what we've sort of reported to Robert Smith. Robert sent it forward to the EBU, and we're just awaiting any news that we can get back from there. It's not the style of fight or the fight result in itself that you look, you guys have got, got the arm with this. It's to do with it's, an illegal substance being used, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's just the illegal substance. Listen... People, get, people come down from up north, people, we boys are flown into over here, and I'm not saying they're mistreated or anything like that, but things go on that the cars are late and, and this, that and the other, that these things happen. It's, it's, you know, they could all be incidental things. We was prepared for anything that, that would happen out there, and that's, we wasn't phased by it in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, even like where you eat and everything else. You know, stuff like that we wasn't bothered about at all. The only thing we've really sort of come back with any gripe about is the fact of what have they used on his cut. Because we knew going out there that we had, basically, Lenny had to stop him to win. We, and, you know, we knew if it was going to go to 12, we were going to have big problems. You know, the fight previous was between the French guy and an Italian guy. And for 10 rounds, this French guy absolutely bashed this Italian kid. You know, and, and, and even sort of Mickey Elliott was saying, he went down there had a brief look at it every now and again and said, this has got to be stopped. The Italian kids had a little rally in the last two rounds and he got a draw. You know, so we know that we wasn't going to get it over the 12 rounds. So we was prepared for that. But it's just, so we had to stop him. So we either had, Lenny had to either had to knock him out or we had to cut him to force a stoppage. When you see a cut in the second round, as we did... Personally, I thought, that's it, we're in. We're in, you know. 
and and it was good. It was on. It was over the right eye of Di Rocco. Lenny was catching Di Rocco cleanly with a jab, and when Di Rocco was throwing his right to the body, Lenny was catching him with a left hook over the top every time he stepped back. And and that was one of the things we sort of looked on and said, Len, every time he steps back, hit him with that. And you could see it, and it come out in the third, and it was still bleeding. At the, it was trickling after they'd had a round to work on it. And it was still trickling with blood at the start of the third. And again, Lenny's carried on, carried on. Then all of a sudden, two or three rounds later, the cut stopped completely. Now, that's, they've used something that has given them an unfair advantage and was sort of really one of two avenues we had to win the fight. If you look at cuts, knockout, or points, we knew that we wouldn't get the points. The knockout was always a possibility. While I, I, we prior to went out there, and I, I said to you in a previous interview that I felt Lenny could have stopped him late on because the Rocco was was absolutely shattered after about four or five rounds. You could see, you could see him really puffing and blowing. And in all fairness to him, he went on the run and, and kept run away. The Rocco ran away for a lot of the fight. He, he, he later rounds he looked very tired. He was holding at times. Yeah, he was holding at times. There was a couple of times he punched low. I mean, I always think it's a little bit unfair when you've got a referee that can't speak English when you've got an English fighter in. Um, so it's, it's, instructions are never particularly clear. I sort of spoke to the referee after, obviously as best as I could with gestures, saying about Di Rocco's head went in, which I said about in the third or fourth round, and then I think it's about the seventh or the eighth that he punched Lenny Low a couple of times. Now this, this again, it's all accidental. These things happen in boxing. I'm not taking anything away from Di Rocco on that score. You know, I don't want to sort of like, oh, it was, he was dirty. And he, he wasn't particularly dirty. These heads come together. He punched low a couple of times, could have been through accident, not a problem. But the referee should note these things. Yet, I said to the referee after, a sort of like gestured head and punching low, and all he said was about Lenny, just pointed Lenny, elbow, and shook his head. Well, he's got to see both people, hasn't he? And, you know, so, but again, as I say, I don't want to harp out and try and get a sob story out that we've moaned about how we were treated, etc. We knew what was going to happen. It's a man's game. We dealt with that. The one moan we've got is what did they use on the cut? And that was, as I say, one of our avenues of victory taken away from us. We were quite fortunate, as I said to Lenny, we saw a lot of the Italian team on the on the internet feed and on the telly and that because they didn't show any of Lenny. So with this cut stuff, we was quite privy to see what, what was going on. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's the colour of these ropes and the colour of the canvas, you know. That's the stuff they used, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know... Vaseline, it, it's in the rules and stated in the rules that you can only use white Vaseline petroleum jelly. Um, it's also stated that you can only use adrenaline. Adrenaline's clear. Vaseline is obviously white, as we've just said. So if you mix the two together, it's still only going to be white anyway. So how come some it's yellow? And the adrenaline would be applied slightly different to the way that was applied, wouldn't it? Yeah, the cup. That, I mean, I saw it briefly. I mean, literally, I've only seen that bit just to sort of reiterate what Lenny had said to me. Um, when I sort of sent it off to Robert Smith. And they look like they're glossing it on, you know, it's the sort of thing I've done on the outside of my house, let alone over a cut. So hopefully something comes of it. Yeah, well, I said Robert Smith does a good job. He does. He, he kind of, they always look out for what's going on for the best of the British fighters' interest. That's their job. So we're yeah. hoping something can get sorted out. No, he's been great. He's been, he was very approachable. Um, I sent him an initial email. He asked me a couple of questions back, which I answered to the best of our ability. Um, sent him the DVD, he's forwarded it on to the EBU and he's also, I also sent him another copy for himself so that, <coughs> excuse me, that he can reference that. So, no, Robert's been great. He's, you know, very approachable, very helpful and hopefully we get some sort of good news out of it. He's, I, I, I Personally speaking, I, I wouldn't particularly want De Rocco stripped because he's done the 12 rounds in all fairness to him and he's the man getting in there. You know, I take nothing away from anyone that steps in between them ropes. Personally speaking, I'd like a rematch. If it's if it's if it's not here, then in France, in a, in a neutral country, and, and we go again. If it was the case that we had to go out of Italy, then fair enough, it's worth a go for Lenny's career because, as I say, I felt he won it. Mickey Elliott felt he won it. Um, even Mick Williamson felt he won it. We all felt he won it, you know. And that's not sort of looking through the eyes of Lenny Dawes fans or, or being biased. He did enough to to, to win the fight. Um, Unfortunately, he didn't get it as you know, as we know. Um, so we'll see. We just didn't, have, you know. Again, we didn't have a knockdown counted in the in the last round. I was just going to say that that if Lenny's two round two rounds behind, as I said, it's, the fight's very close. Knockdown in the eleventh round would have would have made a bit of a difference, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would have made it a ten eight round, and then therefore the hundred and fifteen hundred and thirteen scores would have been hundred and fifteen each. Um, 
there is the thing of the referee's discretion that they that he could still call it a 10-9 round. So possibly we'd have got none on that, and that probably would have gone that way. But you know, count it and see what happens after that. With all the stuff taken into consideration, all the little things that happen, Lenny's stall breaking in in the eighth yeah. round, him falling on the floor, and then not being given a replacement stall like for. for a, Surely there must be something done about this. I know these little tricks go on, but to see them all in the full light and all strung together like that's yeah. quite quite an episode. But I, I, I think rather than sort of moan and cry about it, I think we, what we did at every point we could make a point, we did. Um, you know, and, and I'll give every credit to, to Mick Williamson, Luke, Lenny's brother, and Mickey Elliott, because we just dealt with it. You know, it was a case of all of a sudden we had to pass a garden chair over the top of the ropes. But we had to look after Lenny and... We, we've got a show as a team that we can cope with it because if we show that we can cope with it, it's not going to affect him. So we just got on with it. And, and that was the way we dealt with all these little things. And, you know, I can't praise Mick, Luke and, and Mickey Elliott enough because we just dealt with everything that they that sort of come our way. And, you know, the most important thing was to protect Lenny and look after Lenny as best we could from the minute we got off the plane. And I don't think we could have done it any better. So, you know, that's the most important thing. Who cares what they do? Let them do what they do. You know, the only thing I've got a real gripe about is the cut. So if we went over there again and they did all the same thing, so what? Just use adrenaline and Vaseline next time and see how it goes. How proud are you of Lenny Dawes? Oh, immensely. Immensely proud of him. You know, he, he, I always am proud of him because what he does in here even. You know, but he, you know, he's, he's like a little brother to me. Do you know what I mean? It, it, no, he's great. I can't, you know, he's, he's sort of... We've realised that we sort of got down a little bit. He's took it on the chin, pardon the expression, and he's just getting on with it. So, you know, I just want him to get what he deserves. And, you know, I'm sure Mick Hennessy will pull something off for him. If this doesn't go the way we want it to go, that we get a rematch, um, then hopefully Mick can get him a, a, an international title with some description and push him up. And he deserves a shot at a world title because he's a proper professional. And it's the one thing I will always say. Never, never miles overweight, walks about a 10-10, you know, even at the start of training camp of a 12-week training camp. A proper, proper professional, and you can't knock it. So he deserves what he gets. I agree. <clears throat> I know you guys work hard, you're working hard with the fighters. How's your pad box thing going? Everything going all right? That's going all right. Yeah, that, that ticks away, that wipes his face. That's the main thing. You know, we enjoy the courses and all that. So, no, that's good. That's, it's a good laugh. It's, it's a sort of... It's still boxing, which I love, and it's, but it's a step away and makes things a little bit different. So it's quite nice to do. Eh? We enjoy the courses. I know you've got Box Fit helping out with the boys, <coughs> excuse me, with their kit and stuff. Is there room for any other sponsors? What's going on? There's always room. There's always room. I've just, uh, it'd be nice if we could get, I would lo like, love to be able to get sponsorship for the gym, for one. For, for Rose or ABC? For, for Rose or even, it, whether it's through, whether people done it through me for the professionals, that means we could then give more to the gym because obviously we pay a rent, which can always be more. And it'd be nice to be able to pass that through to the boys f that the club can put more on, even if it's buying a mini bus to keep the boys together to go on the way. So I'd love to be able to get a sponsorship for whether it be for the, uh, for the amateur club, whether it be for the, for the professionals, um, because then we can put more into the club. It'd be great to get one that covers all of it, wouldn't it? So, so it helps the pros and the amateurs, the whole area develop. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anything we can put into the club, whether what we do and whether what the people behind the scenes at the club do, will be brilliant. Um, also, if people want to, would be like to sponsor the boys as individuals, there's always that. Because we're, we're coming along really nicely now. We've got Lenny, who's obviously, you know, we're looking for big things for possible rematch for the European side, which I'm confident, more than confident, he'd win. Um, and then going on to bigger, like, world honours. Warren Fenn's going to have his last four round of this Friday. Um, we're going to be looking at sort of Masters titles, maybe Southern Area titles by the middle end of next year. Joe McDonald, he's looking, he's sort of going to be, he's moving quickly. Joe's had three, but he's sort of boxing like someone who's had seven or eight. He's fighting quite regularly as well, Joe, isn't he? Yeah, it? he's great, Joe. I mean, he's a cracking attitude as well. So Joe's, you know, not going to be far off of fighting for sort of like a junior title later on. Tony Milch has just turned over with us. He's having his debut on Friday, and Tony looks lively as well. So we've got good things going on. You know, can't forget my Danny either, bless him. He gets out and about the chair. How much if I want to sponsor the chair? Get, oh, to get Helder on the back of his shorts, how much is that going to cost me? Probably get him for a fiver. <laughs> <Love it. laughs>
<laughs> you're a bad fella. No, listen, he's like our massive, he's lovely. And I'll just, I, I'd love, you know, he got a draw the other week and I was as pleased as if Lenny had won the European. I'm absolutely, you know, he's great. He drives me mad, but he's lovely. Um, but it, it's, we, as I say, with the boys we got, they're sort of coming on quite nicely and, and, and it, they're worth sort of wanting to be and get involved with. I've just done a, a deal with a good friend of mine, James, who runs uh, Push Fitness. And it's, it's all about, they do nutritional stuff. And it's the first nutritional stuff I've ever tasted that tastes nice. So I think James, with a nutritional side, James trains, uh, trades under Push Energy. But he's been great for us, James, and he's brought down some samples and all that, like protein gels and stuff like that. They do, like, protein bars and the shakes does, and that. does more protein gels that literally you just, after training, and normally they're quite bitter in taste. You know, people will go, oh, I've got mango flavour, I've got this flavour, that flavour. But James's stuff actually tastes quite nice. So he's, he's run a couple of samples past me. And James is going to help us out with, with nutritional stuff after, you know, for, from the start of next season, basically September onwards, when he launches a new range. And he's also got all the recovery drinks, etc. So James has been really good for us. Um, but again, it's just sort of the day-to-day -day stuff. Anything that can help out, with, as I say, with the gym, with the boys as individuals, be brilliant because then obviously we can push more money back into the roots of boxing which is Rosie or ABC and, and we can do something for the boys. Certainly a lot of local businesses around here it would be great if someone gets involved and gives up a little bit of their time and a little bit of energy you know. Yeah I mean we'll always sort out a, a sort of package that we can do you know we'll sort out tickets for fights etc if people want to come in and train alongside the boys or you know more than well I'm sure we can sort something out you know obviously we'd wear logos if needed and you know we, we sort of do as much as we can for the sponsor and for the club just to help everyone on really because as I say the boys are looking like they can do something this year really really looking good as I say Warren's moving up Joe will be moving up towards sort of spring of next year Lenny we want something for by September rematch or an international title of some description so there's going to be champions in here you know so no we're looking forward to it well, listen, Ian, I thank you for giving me a little bit of your time, sir. James, I really appreciate you, you having me down at your gym, and I'm going to stick around for a little bit and watch a little bit of these boys training and that. And More Yeah, thank you very much. Doors always open, mate. You know that. Brilliant. Thank this you. This is James Holder with Ian Burbage. Thank you very much. No brand. Brilliant, mate. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's got to be hard for you now, isn't it? Sort of, this is James Holder. Uh, 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 it's going to be awkward for about three months. It's done.